I've gotten a few comments of people telling me, why are you skating a blank? Question mark with the emoji and whatnot. And I just, I just tell myself like, can I just finish skating the boards that I had before I set this bad boy up? Like what? Like, I'm probably, I'm just excited. I'm excited. Like I've waited since the beginning of the month to get this like full backstory real quick. Um, I got surprised with these boards and then all my friends were already holding them. So in my mind, I was thinking, well, y'all drove up to the Bay Area and most of you live in LA and in Bakersfield and that's like a long drive to go up there. So I was just like, you know what? You guys deserve the boards that you surprised me with. I'll just wait until I get boards shipped to me. So that's like, that week and then the next week i go to miami so i told the people like hey can you like send me a few boards so i can skate and they arrived at braille which is in the bay area and i went to lax which is south so think about it like i'm over here playing like this what is this so, so all right the bay area is north la is south and i was just like so the boards are over here they get there around the time i'm leaving to miami which was like uh, the 3rd of August. And I guess what I'm trying to say is the reason I haven't set this up is because the box, the box was up there and I went down, then left, right, whatever you want to say. I'm confused. So I got the boards, long story short, I got the board and I'm going to be doing a board setup. And I asked a lot of people on Instagram, ask me questions while I set this up. So here I am getting ready and i'm gonna be answering questions and oh my gosh the homie over there power grip tape made this grip tape for me custom grip i'm pumped my brother set up uh the red one he made it look so good <laughs> I told myself I have to just stop skating this beautiful Thorfinn grip. If you've seen Vinland Saga, you know what I'm talking about. Vinland Saga is where it's at. I can't wait for season two. We're doing this, we're doing this. But I'm gonna stop riding this so I could ride this along with this. So I'm very excited. Let's get to it. Um, I love you, wow. That was, that, that was like really nice. Uh, what got me into skating and why Mowgli? You might be wondering like why Mowgli is spelled like this. Well, it's spelled like this because I didn't want to kind of spell it the same way as the movie, like M-O-W-G-L-I. I wanted it to be different. I know everyone like, you spelled it wrong, da da da. And I'm just like, no, I didn't. I spelled it, I spelled it the way I wanted it to. Uh, what got me into skating? Two things. One, I thought I was gonna get like impressed chicks and I quickly realized that girls do not care about skating the way I thought they did. And then the other one that really inspired me before like committing to it because of girls, because like I learned that girls weren't really like caring, like, oh, you can skate, that's cool. Like, it doesn't matter. Girls are interested into like soccer players, football players, dancers, anything, fighters, you know, it's the same thing, whatever. So it comes down to Tony Hawk's Underground. That game really, really inspired me. Tony Hawk's Underground, to be specific, that game really did it all. If I could say one thing about that game, it was the blueprint that I thought that's how you did it. That's how you became a pro skater. That's what you were supposed to do. You go out, you film tricks, you make a video part, you get sponsored, you enter comps, and then like you fight with your best friend over your tape because he steals it. I'm just kidding about that last part. So Tony Hawk's Underground, look, oh my gosh, before I go into any further, look at this. What? So Tony Hawk's Underground, really solidified my idea of what skateboarding was. The terminology, uh, just what 
I wanted to do and from then on I was like barely learning to to get tricks like comfortable like pushing I wasn't good at doing kickflips yet it took like three months before I landed my first kickflip which was insane I remember freaking out when I landed my first one it was beautiful like that moment in time I actually landed in front of my house here so that memory is forever ingrained because like I landed and it was just like quick like this like middle not bolts just like kind of the middle and it was fast it happened fast and Mowgli that nickname happened because I was a freshman ninth grade I was in the ninth grade and I was in PE the I was letting my hair grow out for the first time some of the dudes were like oh you look like the dude from the jungle book and I was just like oh sick not really <laughs> I really didn't like the nickname I thought that that was just another way to kind of make fun of me and just it was some sort of like disrespect in my mind. This is like me being closed minded at that time. What ended up happening two months later, because like this was the beginning two months later. So this is like around October, November. <clears throat> they saw me having lunch with my actual like homies that I hang out with outside of like school. And they're like, yo, Mowgli. And my friends caught on and they're like, what, what, what they call you? Like Mowgli? Like why, why? And it just went on from there and it stuck. It never left me. And it just, people introduced me like that. Like, Oh, this is Mowgli. Oh, Mowgli skates there. Da, 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 da. And I was like, all right, cool. That that's what it is now. Um, I, and I grew to like accept it. And here we are just 14 years later. Yeah. Look at that. Bam! This thing is looking wild. I love it. So we're gonna take this board off. This is Thorfinn Grip. I love it. I'm riding some Spitfires. I literally just bought these like two days ago and I got some bearings in there, brand new, and I'm riding some Mark Suchu Thunder Trucks. That is literally my setup right now. Spitfire wheels, bones, bearings, and then Mark Suchu Thunder Trucks. Thunder Trucks are literally my favorite trucks and Mark Suchu is one of my favorite skaters alongside what Yuto Horigomi, you know what I mean? Cause like he, he won the Olympics and I'm hyped that he did. So we're gonna take this off and we're gonna move on to some other questions. Was I born in Bakersfield? Yeah, I was born in Bakersfield. Any plans for more skate videos? Like why? Uh, yeah, I have ideas and goals. But I want to explain that making full lengths like that, that literally takes so much time, especially with, let me rephrase that. Videos, full lengths take about like six months to a year if that's all you're working on. But if you're, if you have a job or making YouTube videos on the side and then you have your personal life and you still want to skate literally it can take longer than a year so i would love to make more full lengths but it's just so crazy with like everyone's schedule the only reason why it came out was because it's already been it's footage that's already been seen but i made it into a full length what i was doing with why was basically gathering everything that was from 2019 to right now like 2021 and just condensing it to like some of the best moments and some of the best skating to present it as a full length but it's all footage that has been seen so people of course love it more than actual vlogs because it's just so raw and hardcore I'm not saying that it was the best film ever, but I will say that that was really fun to edit and seeing the final product was really awesome. But I've, I've made uh, two other ones before that. So there's, that's why, that's why I was a film from all my vlogs of 2017 and 2018. So it's those two years. And that's a full length, it's a year. And then before that, it was an actual full length with nothing but just saved footage that I never got put out before I started making YouTube videos and it's called This Is Why. All that is in the main page of my YouTube channel. You could go down there and it's a list of full lengths and it's just those three. Uh, I would love to make a full length that I never got to finish and I did start, but a lot of my footage got lost in the process of it. It's called Why Not? 
And I know there's a lot of whys and you're probably wondering what's up with the whys. Why is just like questions. Like I've always questioned life in general. Like, why are we here? Like, I didn't ask to come here. And like the con, you're, you're like just conscious and you're like, one day you're born and then like 10 years later you're aware and then you're just like, I gotta do all this? Like, dang, this is crazy. But like, I mean, I'm thankful for like opportunities, whatever that means. So it's just crazy. Life is beautiful. That's all I want to really say. The next, the next question is favorite animes nobody talks about. Um, this one, maybe it's just a little more on my side because I grew up on it, but Fully Cooly is a six episode anime. And I remember growing up, it was like so just random, explosive. And I was so confused, but I was loving it because it was just something that I was trying to understand and just medical mechanica, robots, just anime flying. 12 year old falls in love with like a 17 year old. At the end of the anime, he kisses her and then she offers to take him like out of space to go find like um, Attic Mist. And at the end, she's like, you know what? You're still a kid. That's what she tells him. And I remember just like, this is like fast. There's baseball involved in it. I remember like a Vespa. That's the first time I ever heard the word Vespa. And I was just like, isn't that a moped? But Fully Cooly for sure is like one of my favorites. I feel like not enough people talk about it and it might suck ass, I don't know. This one gets talked about a lot, but for sure, oh no, 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 no. This one's like, I feel like this one's underrated. Megalobox, that one I feel like no one talks about. That one just came down with its second season, Previous, like just a few uh, months ago, it came on air and season two was fire. Uh, if you don't watch it, watch it, it's boxing. And it's like, they have gears in the back that they put on, it's like suit, and they fight, but season two was more based around the main character, and I love that. I love that it was centered around him and his backstory would happen, like, because I guess it's like five years later after season one. And for me, that was so interesting, because it's like, what happened to Joe? Joe, you've been through some stuff. And I was like, damn, bro. Like... Life got real for Joe, and I was just thinking to myself, whatever happened, Joe, you're, you're still the man. You're the first champion. So that's uh, some animes that I think people don't really talk about. It's only two. I don't really want to go too much into anime right now. I mean, I would love to, but yeah. What motivated me to not stop making YouTube videos all right, let me say some, uh, I can't break this down like in a short story, but I'll just say as much as I can. So I started making YouTube videos December 25th of 2015. And that's the day where I just decided I'm doing this. I'm making videos and I'm just gonna do the, the whole thing. So 2016 hit. And then I started my first vlog, like where I'm like just talking to the camera and explaining and like, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. My voice was monotone and I was just weird and awkward. And uh, I mean, hey, it happens. Social interactions can be crazy, but like doing it in front of a camera. Cause like I wasn't used to like talking in front of a camera without nobody there and just being all this just insecure and then over thoughtful person. As time went on, I kept vlogging and it became so much fun just capturing and editing videos and like, it just became like this thing where I like was capturing my memories of friends and family. And I loved it so much because you can, you create it. Like literally you're creating something out of nothing and then it becomes something so meaningful. And to me, that was powerful. That was very powerful because I could look back at those memories now. Like my brother's 18 and he skates with me a lot and I could go back to when he was like 13, 14, and just to see him in his beginning stages of, of skating is like, to me, amazing because I can't look at myself whenever I, I first began. I only have like small memories of like certain parts of my skate life, 
but I don't have like day to day video <laughs> progression and just like proof of like oh dude look how bad I, I like was trying to improve but I literally have a record of my brother uh, improving throughout 2015 uh, to, tw to 2021 literally like he's put out three parts and I'm not talking about legit parts by companies I'm talking about like what you would consider homie vids uh, he's put out three of them like one when he was like 14 and the other one when he was like 16 and then recently when uh, the one I dropped why he had a part in that and it's just like pretty amazing to see the progression the progressions real my brother used to literally only do bonelesses and that's what got him confident to the way he skates now so motivation for YouTube was that and I just wanted to do this over anything uh, I really just love traveling capturing it and creating something like the Miami vlog that I put out that's what I really like doing like that's some of my favorite stuff whether it gets views or not it's not about that it's literally about just creating something and hopefully it makes somebody feel that emotion you're trying to show them because like with that video my goal was just like I'm traveling with friends and I'm exploring and like th I've never been here so hopefully it inspires somebody to go out there film skate and have fun with your friends that was the real goal honestly but it was very challenging having to do like a job be a parent and uh somehow get sleep and still add skating in there and filming and editing there's like a lot that goes into that and i don't really talk about it because i've never gotten asked so what happened was I didn't quit because I believed in it so much. Then I started editing uh, for Nigel Alexander, MKA, and through him, he, he had connections to Braille, and at the time, they needed another skater to fill in spots, because like, it was just, uh, the skaters at the time were just Uzi, Nigel, that's it. So, I became the third person that was there, and boom, baba. The rest is history. I, I was able to, through that, I was it. So once I got, so once connecting me to Braille, I was able to have more free time to focus on videos of my own. Cause like I like to work outside of Braille, uh, like early in the morning before vid, they start filming for videos or after, after they're done. I like to go just missioning and just going exploring the Bay Area skating spots or just like exploring abandoned areas I'm like so into all that adventuring that I work no matter what and it's because like it's so fun and there was a point in my life where I wanted to do things but I was like stuck working a job that I didn't love and because of that the opportunities I have right now I just take them because I remind myself that in 2019 I wanted to do things but I couldn't so therefore those are the main reasons I continue to stay motivated because there was a time where I wanted to do things and I couldn't but now that I'm like more free and accessible to do these things I just go do them my favorite board company I'll say that it started off with like foundation skateboards because like my first video that I watched was that's life and I love that video. And that's how I was introduced to Leo Romero, Corey Duffel, Matt Allen, Angel Ramirez, and such on and such on. Other great, amazing skateboarders. And then Baker 3 came out. And bro, Baker 3 was like the most influential skate video in my life. And I say that because I watched that video so much, religiously, day in and out. And I was watching that nonstop. And that's why I love street skateboarding because like it is the biggest adventure and you cannot find anything else like it. You could skate a park, but it will never be this, the streets. So Baker 3. And what I'm trying to say is going back to your going back to the point is like foundation skateboards, Baker skateboards. And recently now I love what April is doing with their graphics. I love their graphics. This is crazy because like Ipe sent me a text. He's like, yo, you bought the Mount Fuji board, right? And Udo won with that board, the Olympics. Since then, the prices have gone crazy up. It, it was like $80 to buy his board, the Mount Fuji one. 
and right now there's going there's some on eBay for like five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars, insane, and they're not even in stock on the website. So those are just some of the board companies I like, but I really like what April is doing. I still love Baker, like what they represent, like just the whole raw street skating. Like I love that so much, and forever Baker Three will be like the most iconic blueprint for street skateboarding in my opinion i don't care man like you can you can try to argue with me but like literally that is the best like street film that i've seen and it just gives like street skating but then it just like continues so baker skateboards represent a lot of what i like and then here comes a just the last question as i end the video where can i get the mowgli grip so they're talking about this. Where can you get it? All right, so power. All right, so power grip tape has made Mowgli custom grips. I'm gonna be giving this one away to someone in the comment section below. Go give them a follow. Power grip tape gets swamped with like people just trying to order and stuff. Just know that power grip tape is doing their best and they will respond to your DM if you do try to DM them. But I'm giving this grip tape to one winner down there in the comment section below. The way I'm gonna be choosing the winner is, if you made it this far and you know about the Grip Tape giveaway, I will choose a winner. Just leave the, uh, just leave a comment with your Instagram and I'll be choosing one lucky person and I'll DM you that you won the Grip Tape and I should be choosing the winner by Thursday or Friday. But you just, I'll, I'll let you know, I'll announce it on the community tab like that I have chosen a winner, blah, 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 blah. But literally, I do want to say thank you to anybody that has picked up one of my boards. Like, I'm very thankful. It's been a long journey, and I have many more goals, but I'm hyped that we did it somehow, and I'm, like, very thankful, and it was a very uh, powerful feeling, to be honest, like, that it happened. And now, I just want to say thank you like i just genuinely want to say thank you to anybody that supports like honestly y'all are the best thank you so much i'm gonna shred this board thank you for watching like subscribe and sign out until next time